What does Mario Kart, Need for Speed and literally every game out there have in common? They all have a camera system. A camera that follows the player movements and does it in a nice and smooth way. A camera that has to be able to change viewing modes depending on the player preferences. Back in the day, when consoles like Atari were popular, usually racing games had a fixed camera and the map would come towards the camera. That technique is still present today in games like Subway Surfers. The advantages of that technique are massive in performance boost. Since the camera is static, nothing has to be loaded behind it, making it super efficient. Moving forward in time, static cameras are no longer present in racing games, making it necessary to build a camera following system. The main recipe for building a camera system is to attach to the player object and then simply follow it. So in this video, we'll be learning how to do exactly that. In the previous videos up until now, we've been using this camera behavior. It works ok, but if we go too fast, camera builds up distance. So let's fix that. Let's start by importing the objects. First, we'll import the car game object, then we'll import the folder named camera, and then the children of that object. And lastly, we'll need a camera location indicator. And then we will initialize them in the start method. For that, we will use the transform find function. Using the player tag, we will find all the objects we need. If we play the game, we'll see that they all import at start. Next, we will build a cycle for the indicator using the key code tab. And then we'll test to see if it works. And lastly, we will build a following mechanism. For that, we will need a variable to vary the smoothing time. Now we will see that the camera doesn't look at the player. Back into the script, add a simple look at function. And now the camera works perfectly. And now if we want that accelerating feeling, we will need to vary the smooth time. For that, I'm gonna need a reference to the controller. And then we'll use the car's velocity to vary the smooth time. After a couple of minutes, I was able to get the right values and then this is what I came up with. 